but uh, we will get started here in a moment I just need to pull up the YouTube chat so how's everybody how's everybody's day going so what we're going to be going over today is a few concepts in Python that were requested on my stream from yesterday I had a little bit of time to look into them uh, each in depth and um, now I'm gonna kind of um, <clears throat> share just generally what I found and uh, have a kind of a cool thing for the second thing so um, whenever there's a little bit more people in here we'll go ahead and get started I see there's just me watching right now no worries so I guess we can go ahead and talk about the uh, first thing which is files <clears throat> how to handle files in Python now there's really three methods Let's see if we can make this a little bigger So there's the Twitch chat. There's that YouTube chat. I gotta make sure that's showing. There we go. Alright. So and then the other thing is copilot seems to be down. Let's see if I can reopen Visual Studio Code, but yeah, copilot being down is gonna be a major issue for me. Ah, it seems to be back up good stuff okay so handling make it just a little bit bigger yeah like that except let's make this small and this small all right so handling files in Python and really we're looking at three different methods we'll call the first one is the the long way where we call f open and f close uh, if you see in a try catch try catch block and then method two is the short way with open and then with close and then method three is going to be the cool way, which is to use with and a class with custom dunder methods. Let me break that up so we can see it all here. So number one is the long way where we'll kind of hash everything out in a big old Python block, a try catch, and um, <clears throat> it's perfectly uh, equal to the second way, which is the uh, using um, Python's default um, width that you get with the class that's returned from um, f open and f uh, yeah it's f open. Um, you use that class and then you can uh, use with and then there's some methods that I'll show you that are called automatically so let's go right into just showing uh, the long way um, let's just print out the uh, contents of this other um, the this other uh, Python file real quick so three the long way So we'll try to open the file and then we'll print not found and then we'll do uh, file.close and we'll go ahead and define our file name up here so we don't have to keep doing that as uh, just this one right here sync.py just so that we can have a nice Python code to look at and so this should print out the contents of that file 
So let's see if it does. Oops. Looks like we got some old code in here some somewhere. Let's see, where exactly is that happening? That doesn't I'm on files.py. Let's see. Oh, is it is it actually opening the file as Python? It's pretty wild. Let's see. Oh wow. All right, well then let's just rename this to zoom out a little bit so I can see the context menu for God's sake. All right, let's rename this to sync.txt now. Okay? Same contents but as a txt file because it seems it seems like it's executing the Python file, which is really weird. But anyway, so now we're changing the name of the file to sync.txt. Now we can open that. And okay, no, it was it was doing it. Okay, I just don't have my terminal here big enough. Why don't I go ahead and pop this out here? Go ahead and do this in a different terminal window. This one right here. So I'll just CD over to my Python folder. And you know, I don't think I even need here. Let me try Python. I don't think I even need the, the full path. Python files.py. There we go. We can see the content. I'll make it a little bit bigger there. We can see the content of the file there. And it wasn't executing Python code before. Let me make this terminal go away. There we go. It wasn't executing Python code there before. It was just printing out the file. It just looked like it was. Yeah. See? Good stuff. Let me get rid of this because it's unnecessary. All right. That's the long way to read a file. And then there's also the long way to write a file, which is similar. Now let's do the short way. Now, first of all, let's see what happens when the file's not found. Let's, let's just intentionally misspell the uh, the file name. So this actually throws an error, and it's not a uh, file not found error. It says file is not defined, but that's not. Let's see if it's trying to like okay, if that may be a downstream error like in the uh in the finally there. Let's see. Let's change it back to working. Okay. And then it doesn't tell me that there's no that there's a file not to oh, here let me get rid of that. Change it back to breaking. And then it just says file not found because uh, I guess there's no uh, file defined in the uh, in the finally. So anyway, we'd expect to have the same result here, saying the same thing. It says file not found error. It's a different error, but it says the same thing. No such file in the directory. But when we do have it, we should expect to see again the contents and so this is the nice short way of doing a file read right here in Python cuts down on a lot of diff a lot of lines right there now the cool way right here is to make your own file class with your uh, own dunder methods right here and these right here are what I mean by dunder methods so when they have uh, two underscores in the front and the back they're called 
dunder methods. And this is essentially the same thing. Uh, uh, this is essentially what you get back when you return uh, when you return uh, this class. So with file, what you can do is you can call with file now as your method, and you can see now that you can print out file closed here. File opened. Actually, file opened is here. I'm not sure what enter is in this context. Let me just, I will just say entered so we can see it in the, in the print. All right, so back over to the console. Let's get rid of the actual print that it's doing. Uh, we'll just save that in a variable and do nothing with it. Yeah. And so that should make it more clear uh, in what order our dunder methods are being called. We got file open, file entered, and file closed. So you can see that, you know, if you're used to a different type of programming language, you know, this is akin to like where you would do your garbage cleanup and stuff like that. So you can kind of. Python makes it to where you're not it's not necessary to use things like that but they make it available to you and that's pretty cool so that's pretty much all I'll say about uh, files right now um, the question was just basically how to handle files in Python and uh, that's I mean I, c I could go into more like we could look at how to um, read a directory or something like that but I, I don't I don't know I, I think that you know if we want a more focused uh, discussion about files we can do it at a different time we can hone in on a different subject for the sake of moving this along we're gonna go straight along to async and uh, I prepared for you something that's pretty cool I, I mentioned it in the title of the of the stream and the, in the video um, this uses an uh, th this uses the async IO library in Python to create um, asynchronous uh, sound waves into a chord and uh, then it plays it um, one on top of each other so it creates a polyphonic uh, synthesizer so you can see what that looks like right here actually let's just do that here in the console the name of the file is async that py. Oof. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that's a C major chord, and uh, we can we can change it here. Um, we can change it to a major six chord like this, or we could do a, with an F on the top. Oof, that's a tough one. But uh, yeah, this is made possible by the use of these uh, async uh, tasks. And um, let's go over this and see how it works. So um, the entry point for an asynchronous uh, program is asyncio.run. And then you have to feed it one of your, uh, your, your main function that you define. And you have to define each function in this chain as async as long as it's on this thread. So in this one, what we're doing is we're awaiting a uh, another uh, async function. And when we uh, await a function, what we're doing is we are, uh, and we're returning a, uh, a, I think it's called a future. And uh, then we're, you're just, you're just basically waiting for it to uh, finish all of its uh, tasks. So the tasks are um, enumerated and gathered here, and then um, they are just uh, creating a sine wave and then playing it on the simple audio buffer and uh, then do some sleeping. 
but it only it only plays one note due some due to some complications with the simple audio library. It only plays one um, chord at a time, but it does make it possible to have uh, polyphonic. It's just you know getting the the issue worked out with the uh, with the library is one thing. So this isn't a very good. This is this is very cool, but it's not it's not a very good visual demonstration. It's more of an audio demonstration of uh, of uh, let's hear it. let's hear it again one more time. Oh, that was the bad one. It's more of an audio demonstration of um, async. If I tried to uh, de-async this, it would it would not play a chord, but it would also not play the next note because of the same aforementioned complications with the uh, with the uh, async library. It's an unfortunate um, issue with this example, but I can I can like we can move on to try to make another example right here. So that is the uh, why don't we save this as async synth. And uh, we'll make a copy of it that's async um, basic. This is going to be a basic example of the uh, async IO. So let's leave a little bit here just so I have something to go by. We do have um, we do have copilot back, so we don't need none of that. We don't need this, and we don't need none of that. All right, all we got here is our main function, which is our async define function. Actually, I do want some of those comments. Yeah, I'm going to leave that there just so I can uh, cheat off of it. So what do we want to do? Let's create a function that says uh, get, or, yeah, def, get random number until 10 and then uh, this what I want it to do is just continuously return a random number um, until it gets to 10 so what we need is a while loop and then a random number Which I guess I can just define that. Uh, let's see, I guess I can just define that outside of here as zero. This is one way to do it. I think do while would also be another way to do it, but this is fine. So while rando is not equal to 10. Rando equals random int one and ten, and uh, let's do uh, trials as well. And we'll just increment trials every time we we do a do a trial. And also here, we need to uh, do a sleep here. So I think that uh, async io dot sleep one will do the trick for us. Also, and I forgot, we need to make this function async as well. So what we want to do is we want to basically create three different tasks where we're going to count a number um, until ten on each one. So in theory, they'll all finish at different random times. So that's what we want to demonstrate. So let's say on our main function, we'll go for i in range five. Let's just do three for now. For now. And uh, while we can see, let's see, we'll have to print something out. Let's see. I guess we'll just print at the end. Uh, 
and uh, we should be seeing different uh, I almost want to make that like less I don't know we'll see we'll see if it works so we'll go await get number until 10 that's not exactly how we want to do it though because what we want to do is we want to create a task and then have those tasks be uh, be executed all at once basically that's what that's what the impetus of asynchronous is so let's create that tasks array right here and then instead of doing this play note like I had earlier we'll do uh, get random number until 10 and then uh, just so we can kick them off we'll print out uh, trying to get rando from here all right let's see what happens so async basic dot pi is what we're looking at so async basic all right we got random is not defined I don't think I need numpy. Where do we get random from? Just an import. All right, we have a uh, issue here. Let's see what it is. Okay, so here we're not awaiting the sleep. And so it's it's just trucking through the entire thing, basically. There we go. We got one. Got 10 after one trials on one of them. The next one got 10 after nine trials. And we should get a third one here eventually. That's why I wanted to cut down on the variance because it t could technically take a little bit. Since it's sleeping a second each time. There we go. The last one uh, got 10 after 23 trials. So that worked out pretty well. Let's see what it does on the second time. All right, there we go. We got one after four trials that time. The both times where it gets one after gets gets the uh, 10 after one is, is suspicious to me. Huh? I guess it was just a uh, coincidence. There we go. Got 10 after 7 trials. Alright. This is a pretty good uh, demonstration of async. These all get fired at once. And you can see that they are um, resolving at different times because they're different um, when they resolve is random, actually. Random, uh, you know, with a degree of 10, whatever. So yeah, that is a demonstration of async in Python. Um, I think that if we tried to add any more to it at that point, I think we'd probably be beating a dead horse. So um, let me know if you got any questions in the chat or um, if you want to see anything else covered. Um, I'll try to make it my priority and um, I'll have it ready by the, the next stream I stream on. Tuesdays and Thursdays now. Today is Tuesday. Two days from now it will be Thursday. And uh, if you have a request, let me know. And um, like this one, I'm happy to go over it. All right. So now the other part of this, the second half of this stream, is going back into um, Dark Hallway. So let's go over and see where we're at with that. I actually haven't looked at it in a while, so this should be interesting for everybody. Actually, don't even know. Let's see, do I have it in my recent? Open recent. 
I'm not sure. I know I have it in my repos here, so not to worry. Not to worry. Not to worry. And there's a lot of uncommitted changes. It's a little bothersome. Oh, I remember what that is. I remember. Some of it is actually part of the menu, though. Some of it is. This is this is nothing. Calc is nothing. This, however, this is something. This is something. All right, great. All I really care about is the repo path and opening it. So file, open folder, and dark hallway. No, we don't want to. We don't care about that right now. We already did our. We already did our lecture. Went surprisingly well. All right, so here we are in dark hallway. In the code of of such. Uh, let's see. Actually, we don't want to be. See, we already have the cop the path copied. So let's just cd over there. And we'll Python main.py to see the game. Ugh, where am I? Whoosh. There's no items there. There we go, there's an item. They're in the bookshelves, okay. Alright, so here we are. We can go around. We can collect items till our hearts give out. We got bags. We got some orbs. I feel like we need keys. I feel like the bookshelves need to have keys every so often. And these chests are going to need to be openable. And the chests will have other keys. Something. to make a game like this because there's no tangible goals consume all of my time so I'm kind of thinking of just going to um, something much more tangible you know like a cat game I think I want to do a cat game like a super realistic super cute cat game Unless I can think of something really quick that ha that is supposed to happen in this hallway that makes this game interesting, and it's it's easy to program. I just I don't know. One thing I think that is is worth looking at is making it to where there's a little bit of variance to where you're not always going straight. Basically, give the illusion that it's like an infinite maze. And I had an idea for how to do that. See if I can draw it. I suck at doing this, but if I can if I can figure it out, it might be worth it. So where's the paintbrushes? A brush. Yes. Okay, cool. So zoom in there. Um, if we have uh, right now what we're doing is we've got the hallway, right? And when the player... Player... Kind of looks like a little player. Gets to right here, then we're going to plus plus the hallway. H hallway plus plus. It doesn't make any sense. Hold on. When the player gets to right here, hall plus plus. And also, the hall that's behind also gets ditched. So this hallway goes bye bye. Bye bye. 
So that atrocious drawing basically means that the um, hall come is it comes in right here, and you can't see it because of the of the shroud because of the darkness, and it is also currently a straight line a straight hallway every time, every time it's a hallway. But what I'm saying is instead of that, why don't we make it to where instead of being a straight hallway all the time, it could also be like a cross. You know what I mean? And then, depending on where you go from that direction, um, it would then choose, you know, if uh, if you're going if you're going this way, for instance, then it would choose the next thing. It could be it would randomize the different shapes of hallway, and it would give the appearance that you're going down an endless hallway. It would be an, an illusion. And um, it, it, it's also, I don't, I'm not sure about, you know, the disorienting factor or, or whatever, but it would also, you know, you, you, every time you turn around and go behind you, you're going a different way as well. So I'm not, I'm not sure. There, there, there might have to be a need for a fixed map, which we just kind of, where we feed um, parts of a, of a large chunk of a map into this and say, okay, if we're, if our x coordinate is within this range, then we're we're feeding we're feeding this chunk um, based on a uh, based on a map that we have. Not sure. Um, both are kind of equal. Um, I don't know. It it really depends on what what the goal of the game is, right? So the question. Should the map be fixed or random? Now, what is it? What is a fixed map? Fixed map means that you know you when you go behind you, it's the same as what was there when you went there, and then the random map means it's it's different. Basically, it's different. So, obviously, with the fixed map, you know, you could implement, you know, the like a go to this place, and it's like, oh, I've been there. You have to remember where you went and all that stuff. With the random map, you kind of have to, you kind of have to make it item based or something like that. And I, I think you lose out. I think you lose out on a lot of the uh, forward and backward nature that you get with some of these games. So that's why I'm kind of leaning towards the fixed map. And then obviously with the random map, you have to get more creative with the way that the game flows. Uh, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, um, we couldn't say something like, oh, you know, go back to this door or whatever. And, and if, if we did, and we try to implement some kind of backwards and forward strategy that wasn't natural. It'd be it'd be weird. I feel like having a, a fixed map would be um, the way to go. Just to see like. Maybe we could, um, you know, take inspiration from a map like this to understand exactly how hallways work and how they're spaced out and all that. So we have the hallway and, you know, it's always separated at least, you know, in part by rooms and, uh, the only really two areas where hallways are touching is when they're intersecting. That's cool. Auditorium. I mean, we could even make this game lost in the school. Let's see what kind of 3D assets would come with. Like, 
Locked in the school or something like that, yeah. How can you get out of the school if you're locked in the school? You know, you have to find the erasers and erase the message or whatever. Find out the the key to the to the locker that has the the hidden thing in it, and then you find out your parents are dead or something like some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? If you make it out of school, as opposed to just some mysterious hallway. So I mean, having a fixed map is going to be no joke of a uh, of a change here, and it's something I really have to consider if this is if this is really the game that I want to make right here, because I do still want to make the cat game. I I honestly think maybe the cat game is the way to go. Like having having the I was listening to something earlier today that was saying. Uh, having constraints on something counterintuitively will make you more creative. Think about it more creatively, and thus the product of that pro of that uh, creative thinking will also be creative. And it really got me thinking, like, huh, you know, maybe maybe leaving something open ended is not the right way to go. Maybe uh, putting a lid on things and and being a little bit more honed in. Maybe that's the way to go. And so that's why Dark Hallway, you know, in its in its abstract nature, and by abstract I mean like not thought out at all, might be not the right way to go. It's I'm just that's what I'm has been tossing has been, you know, going around in my head. Anyway, by the way, if you look and see here, this is extending the hallway. This is what I was talking about um, in my in my sad Microsoft Paint attempt to explain how the hallway works. When you get to right here, it calls extending the hallway, which actually physically builds more hallway. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about building. I don't know about continuing with dark hallway. What else could we do? We could just uh, take a look at. Hey, Malamatinos. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, what are you uh what are you struggling with anything that i could help with um i was uh just going over some stuff um async and file handling Let's see here can i even chat in this i don't think i can chat in uh this stupid widget it's just an overlay. You're still on the basics. All right. Well, let's uh, let's start with um, the basics then. Um, we can uh, one one pretty cool thing that I that I like about um, Python that I like knew, but I, it was it was kind of in the back of my head kind of thing is the idea of um, dunder methods. And uh, dunder methods are a great way to make your code and classes more manageable. So I was over here and I created this class, which is basically similar to whatever class, I'm not sure which one it is, but when you call with open, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but that's how you can read a file with, with two lines called with open. And what it does essentially, yeah, what it does essentially is it calls first uh, this init method and it calls open on the file 
and then um, enter, which I'm, I'm not sure what context enter is, but um, I think it's just accessing the, the file itself, like when you when you return it or whatever. And then when you go out of this width, it calls close. So it's a pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you know that that's actually how width works. So you can actually define like your own classes and use the width. Um, you can use the width with whatever you define. I don't, I don't know what it would be right off the top of my head. Um, but the other thing that we were looking at is async. I don't know if you've had a chance to play with async yet, but in Python, um, usually you use async IO. And uh, what this does is it creates a function, an async function, to get a random number until it reaches 10 and then print how many times it took to get 10. And so we create three tasks and then we fire them off at once and then we see which one is basically able to get to, get to the end of the finish line first. So let's, let me copy this path. And then what was it? Python async basic py. So they're all trying to get the rando. What do you gain with these three randoms uh, that might reach ten? Uh, no, I mean it's just a demonstration of of what um, async does. Um, it's probably not something that is a practical use of it, um, if that's what you're looking for. I have another example that's a practical use case for async right here. All right, I did actually. Yeah, yeah, it's. Um, It's right here. This is so. This is a synthesizer. I don't know how loud this is, so I apologize if it's if it's loud. But um, basically, it's going to do the same thing, except instead of counting to a random number for ten, it plays a tone in line so that it can achieve a chord, um, so that it can create a polyphonic um, synthesizer. And then I can change the uh, note to something more pleasant there. Wait, hold on, that's the wrong code. Get the code. Yeah, it, it, thank you. Yeah, it's um, this is the full disclosure though. This is not uh, the right way to use this audio library. This is this is a like, I guess like you're supposed to create a chain of of chords or something like that, but. Um, this is how you would achieve, um, you know, async tasks on top of one another. So I changed I changed it to a more pleasant one. Actually, hold on. Yeah, there we go. No. But um, yeah, so there's there's some stuff with uh, Python, and then uh, we have. Um, on previous streams, we've been dealing with um, a game engine called Ursina, and I created a billiards game here. Let's see, I installed it earlier. I hope that it's, uh, it's in Python main.py. Yeah, what's up, MKB? Hey, a library is created and then it is distributed without a strict license how it is used is the consumer's business yeah exactly if it wasn't then you would create a license for it or have some kind of agreement yeah I agree with that 100% um, so the, the um, all the rendering and the shading which is actually kind of jank to be honest um, that's done with uh, Ursina. This uh, image right here is just a really long JPEG image. It's called a skybox image. And um, so the physics is actually 100% done by me. 
Um, the only thing that they offer is like, yeah, this is Python too. We can take a look at the code here. The uh, the only thing that they offer for physics is like some gravity for the first person controller. So what this is is um, each one of these balls is saved in an array. Here, we can actually look at the code so it's more clear. Do do the balls. All right, so each one of these balls is an instance of one of these physics entities. And with every frame, it calls this apply forces function. And I don't know how familiar you are with physics, but you, you, the objects have uh, forces applied to them from the outside. Um, and so the physics engine is what's applying the outside forces um, to all of the different uh, physics entities, the balls, basically. And uh, in the physics class is where that's happening. The, when I say it's applying uh, the forces, I'm meaning it's, uh, it's, it's uh, doing uh, gravity, it's doing collision forces, forces and it's doing uh, friction, which is actually um, each... Um, that's actually a friction that is inherent to the uh, object. It's not really an, it's it's not quote unquote outside force. It, it, it is, but I'm, I've modeled it as an inside force. But so this is what uh, handles the collision. Um, if the ball intersects, which is something that Ursina provides, the ge geometry. No, it's it's not really easy to program it. But I mean, um, you know. There's there's barely anything that's good that's easy to program, you know. So not using this audio lib correct statement is null and void. There's no proper way to. Yeah, true true MKB. I meant I meant that it's not the uh, it's it doesn't um, it doesn't work properly the way that I used it. You know, if I could use a doorknob as a weapon, but there's probably a better tool for the job if you know what I mean. But uh, anyway, so. So this this is a com combination of the Ursina uh, geometry and drawing and all that stuff. Um, oh, and I made these balls, um, the the balls that you see in the game uh, in Blender. They're three D objects. I base I I say I made them, but I, I I downloaded one free ball and then I figured out how to remove like the stripe and and all that stuff. So yeah, man, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with Python. Um, it's a good one to learn, but also, I mean, as you're learning programming, I don't know, are, is, is it Python that you're learning or is it programming programming that you're learning? Because there's a big difference. And um, if you're learning programming in general, then I recommend you spending like 90% of your time on a easy language that's you know easy to learn and accessible like Python and then maybe like 10% of your time learning a uh, more complex language like C++ or something like that and then as you start to understand programming better and better you change that proportionality you know to whatever you want you know you can even get rid of it altogether if you want but I definitely recommend uh, a foray into a compiled language like uh, like C++ or C Sharp or C or Rust is becoming popular nowadays. Um, whatever is your poison that you pick. Um, but yeah, have a lot of fun with Python because uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know quite what o o camel is or whatever, but yeah, that's cool. All right, so I mean, you have a little bit of a background with programming, so um, probably that the only thing that I would amend to that is that your portionality would be a little bit different. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe even you 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 may even I don't know your your specifics of your experience, but you may even find C a more comfortable place for you, or or C plus plus. God forbid. Um, that's one thing I recommend is, you know, you might like something um, even even if it's something that a bunch of people say is horrible 
like C++, because I actually like C++. Um, a lot of really cool stuff in C++, but this is not a C++ stream. This is a Python stream. And uh, I pretty much showed all my stuff. Um, I suppose, I don't know, what do you think? I like C a lot up until the pointers were coming on every direction. Yeah, I don't, I never, I never uh, learned C, but uh, yeah, C++, yeah, pointers, is, those are, uh, oof. Like, and then it's like, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's something to where like you get into this like pointer, 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 pointer thing. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. And uh, yeah, I'm not the biggest C++ guy, but I do, I do enjoy um, the code for some reason. But um, yeah, I could try to spend my time figuring out what's the right way to do this they had a um, they had this example which is it creates something called an audio stack right here but I think this is broken actually here let's let me see copy path My command prompt has gone away. Python sync. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Try to do it from here. I had to reinstall Python earlier because it was not wanting to install this audio library because it was hung up on uh, something to do with uh, NumPy or something I'm not sure but if that if you ever see something to where you can not install a package on pip then you should probably just reinstall Python but then you do have to deal with all this crap again you know setting the environment variables alright so this is this is good alright value operands could not be broadcast together with shapes blah 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 all right well let's just try this note right here god I don't even know what any of that is to be honest Oh, that worked. All right, well, which one's the problem? CSH notes. Yeah, I commented that out there. It says operands could not be broadcast together with shapes. What is the problem then? I don't know. This is not exactly my code. So, yeah. Oh well, that's not gonna work. Let's go back to, um, oh, thank you for that. That's very sweet, love on YouTube. Um, let's go back over to the other synthesizer and listen to that beautiful sound. Oh wait, not sync, it's called synth. Oof beautiful but loud Oof. so we have a wave that we're returning yeah let me do that that sounds like a good idea good lord that didn't help at all hang on let me cut down the desktop audio here yeah, I turned down my, um, it's just extremely loud. Okay. So I'm going to try to figure out how to get the stack 
Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that it's fixed. I'm gonna try to get figure out how to get this stack to work um, so that we can hear uh, multiple chords being played at once. And it's gonna be we're gonna have to build our chords kind of and then play them basically. So this is the way that they're doing it here. They've got this. Uh, uh, MP I'm not sure what MP zeros does but it seems like yeah I don't yeah. no idea but I'll steal it I mean they got these hmm. I guess Put it back to where it was gonna work. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this on the stream. I don't, uh, frankly, I don't understand this stuff. On this level, you know, like frequencies and stuff. Offset is frequencies, yeah. But why would it be saying that it can't play the shapes together? It's, I'm not sure. Um, oh, is it because there's a duplicate shape? Is that it? No. Four, one, 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 one. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to figure this out right now. And uh, it's my time to go. I only stream for an hour on two days a week. Um, but. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, look into this more. If you're interested in seeing more audio um, stuff with Python, we can go into that. Or um, if you're interested, yeah, man, ask away, no problem. I'll stay for a few more minutes if you if you need me to as well, um, and then I'll be back on uh, Thursday. And and um, you know, I I come I I also stream like in between days as well, so you might be able to catch me on mornings or or night or whatever, depending. Um, so how many years have I been programming? I'd say eight, kind of roughly. Um, I've been employed, I guess it's nine, programming nine, and then uh, eight, I've been employed as a programmer or, you know, engineer or whatever. Um, so yeah, quite a while. All sorts of different stuff. But anyway, that's all from me today. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I hope I see you next time and uh, feel free to, you know, subscribe on YouTube and, um, you know, fo follow or uh, whatever it is. Um, I would really appreciate it. It would really help me out. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. And if you have any requests, uh, let me know. All right. Peace out, guys.